All right, it's me again, Mr. Moore. Today we're going to be looking at uh, one of the sixth grade pre-AP um, concepts called solving and interpreting solutions, uh, most specifically uh, dealing with inequalities. Um, inequalities are uh, related to equations in that there are variables, there are coefficients, there are constants, and we have to work to interpret what the actual solutions are. With an equation, typically there is one solution, and with inequalities, there are more than one, so there it's conditional. So it can be a little bit difficult for you as my student to understand that there can be more than one answer. But by definition, solving and interpreting solutions has to deal with multiple solutions. Now, we have two different methods that we're going to look at. We're going to look at, first of all, the um, substitution method. And then I'm going to look at an interpretation method where I just solve for the inequality and I determine whether or not the answers that I have are actually going to be correct. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to draw a little box over here and I'm going to, in this box, we're going to determine true or false as to whether or not this particular solution would actually be satisfied um, or would satisfy the inequality that we have. Okay. So I'm going to draw myself a box. I'm an artist, right? Okay. So we are ready to go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to use the substitution method. Now, you may have heard me talk about going to Walmart in previous videos. Going to Walmart means that you are taking the least expeditious method or route get to get to your answer. Now, does it mean that you are uh, not able to get the correct answer? No, it doesn't. It means that it's just going to take you a little bit more time. The chances of making a mistake can be greater with that particular method. So what I'm... I'm going to start off by making sure that I have everything written down like so. So let's see, I'm going to rewrite this uh, three times because I have three different possibilities for my solution. And the goal is for me to see whether or not these possible solutions will make this inequality true. Now, when I say make the inequality true, uh, if you are a parent, I'm going to show you exactly what that means in just a second. So substitution means that instead of this variable, and we are not scared of letters in my class, this variable simply means that it's an unknown number that I do not know what the value is just yet. Okay, I'm supplied a few different values. So that's what I'm going to substitute or plug in for the unknowns, okay? So in this case, two times negative 12 plus 18 is greater than negative four. Two times, and I'm using the next one now, negative 11 plus 18 is greater than negative four. And um, for this last one, two, uh, I'm just gonna write two there, two times negative 10 plus 18 is greater than negative 4. Okay, so now I have negative 24, and I'm just working just to simplify at this point. It seems like I'm doing a lot of work, possibly, possibly going to Walmart. Negative 20 plus 18 is greater than negative 4. Okay, so I'm still just um, whittling this down. Okay, so negative 6 is greater than negative four, is that true? And then, and I'm gonna go back and look in just a second, negative 22 <clears throat> plus 18 is going to be negative four. Is that greater than negative four? And then negative uh, two, is that greater than negative four? Okay, so now it's just a matter of me going back through and figuring out, okay, what is what? I know that negative 24 plus 18 is going to yield a negative 6. Is negative 6 greater than negative 4? So let's do a little bit of a number line as a support. Okay. We have 0. <clears throat> I'm going to do negative 2, negative 4. I always tell my students to make an appropriately sized number line. Okay. 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay. So negative 6. Is that greater than negative four? Because it's two, because negative six is to the left of negative four, that means that no, that is false. So negative 12 is not going to make that 
um, correct. What about negative 4? Is that greater than negative 4? Can negative 4 be greater than itself? No. So that one is also false. That does not make that inequality true. What about negative 2? Negative 2, is that greater than negative 4? If negative 2 is to the right of negative 4, then yes, it is a greater number. So the closer that it gets to 0, the greater that number. So the only one that is true in this case is um, negative 10. Okay, that's using the substitution method. So, so as you saw with my previous work, you know that, again, negative 12 would, not, would be a false statement. That is not going to make it correct. No, negative 11 is also a false statement. That's going to make it um, incorrect. And then um, negative 10 is the only true statement. So as you saw there at the bottom, the only one that is valid is this one. Okay. Now, let's look at the interpretation method. Now, the interpretation method is where I have to look to see, based on me solving this particular equation, as to whether or not these answers would work. Would they be true or false to make the statement true or false? So I'm going to go ahead and just start by solving. I'm using the regular method of solving for an inequality which means that I'm going to separate what's on the left-hand side of this inequality statement and what's on the right, okay? So I am going to subtract the negative 3 from both sides because I want this variable and coefficient by itself, okay? So that is negative 6y is greater than or equal to negative 3. What I'm doing at this point is I'm going to divide using the inverse operation. If you are unclear about the steps to solve, please take a look at my solving two-step equations and inequalities video. All right, so now I have negative 6 divided by 6. They cancel each other out. It becomes positive, okay? So now greater than or equal to uh, negative 3 divided by a negative 6 is going to give me a positive 1 half, okay? Now, one of the rules when you are dividing by a negative coefficient, okay, is that you must flip the sign. So the next step is actually going to be for us to actually flip your sign. Now, this becomes y is less than or equal to uh, one half. Y is less than or equal to one half. So just this little procedure that I made, again, dividing by a negative means that I'm going to actually flip the sign. But I could have checked that um, and just to make sure that my information was correct. So as noted, we know that one half, of course, is going to be equal to one half. Now, the only other two that I need to interpret at this point is basically a value of y that is going to be less than or equal to one half. Is one less than or equal to one half? No, so that statement is going to be false. What about zero? Is zero less than or equal to one half? Absolutely it is. It is less than one half. So if I were to go back and plug in these values for a check, okay? So if I were to do a check down here at the bottom, okay? I want to plug in Remember my values that uh, have to be false. I'm going to plug in uh, 1, okay? Let's see if 1 is going to make a false statement, okay? So again, I'm going to write down my original problem, greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to now substitute in as I did um, earlier, or much like I did earlier. Uh, well, that would be 1, okay? So I'm going to plug in a 1 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. This is negative 6 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Is that statement true? Negative 3 is not greater than 0, okay, because negative 3 is to the left, excuse me, yes, to the left of the 0, okay? So if that again is to the left of the 0, we know that that is not greater than, okay? So negative 3 is not, so that would be a false statement. So that's why we have the only one as being false as 1. Okay, so with that said, if you have a question about anything that I've talked about in this video, please bring it up in class. You may also attend my tutoring on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And as always, I will see you in class tomorrow.